Terraria unveiled the KC-23. This is a one-off, which is unfortunate because this is one of the best Ferraris in recent times that I've seen when it comes to the design. And what we're going to do in this video is I want to let you know why I think this is such a gorgeous machine and why I hope that this is the direction that Ferrari is going to take. They got a little bit lost for a while, stepped away from their true elegance and gracefulness that they've had ever since the 50s and the 60s. But with the KC23, they are absolutely back on track with this design. First of all, let's have a look at this article from Car and Driver. Let's get to know this KC23 a little bit better. Pretty weird name. It probably has something to do with the buyer of this car. Maybe his initials are KC or something like that. Maybe he's a sport legend with that has a number 23. I don't know who it is, but it's a weird name for a Ferrari, that's for sure. So this one-off commission will run at the Goodwood Festival of Speed this weekend with a 48 GT3 Evo engine and styling like nothing else to come out of Maranello. The KC23 blends inspiration from past Ferraris, which is crucial, with the thunderous V8 of a 488 GT3 e race car, designed for non-competitive use only. So you can only use this on the track. The one-off hints at the future of the Prancing Horse brand when it comes I assume, to the design uh, philosophy here. The twin turbo V8 under the hood carries over from the 48 GT3 ra race car, but Ferrari hasn't revealed the maximum output. However, in that 488 race car, it makes 591 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. To me, while looking at this shape, these numbers seem maybe a little low. I'm not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure it makes more than that. Any thought of homologation is completely forgotten with the inclusion of the electronically controlled movable panels along each flank. A huge motorsport size removable rear wing at the rear end. So you can remove this wing. And when you do, this turns in to a proper gorgeous Italian sculpture on wheels. When you put the wing on, it looks like a Lamar racer. It's, it's a very cool design. The inside of the KC23 is pulled straight from the 48 GT3 race car. You can see that here. I'm gonna show you that in more detail uh, when we jump into Photoshop in just two seconds. The KC23 was purchased by a longtime Ferrari customer and there is no word on the price. Let me guess. 5 million or something like that. Just imagine the cost of building a one-off with all the panels, all the graphics that you need to make one single time. It's not going into mass production. This is definitely an expensive car, but we all knew that. So I've, I've thought the Ferrari has gone a little away from uh, the, the, as I said in the beginning, the elegance and the typical Ferrari design language. For example, a good example of that that I did not like was this one-off uh, the BR20 that came out in 2021. I, I just did not like anything about this design. The, the front end sits too high. It looks like it has this sinister smile to it and it lacks everything that is to me personally Ferrari when it comes to, uh, to the design of these cars. And then we had another very good example of a one-off was the SP48. This is just stunning. It was built on the F8 Tributo. And this is exactly what I wanted the F8 tri Tributo to look like. I think the Tributo was the peak of uh, Ferrari overstyling. And Ferrari and overstyling, these are two words that you never want to have intersect and that happened definitely with the FH Rebuto. Since then they've come a little bit back from that type of styling which I'm glad to see and this KC23 is just another example of that. Before we jump into Photoshop I do have some good news uh, for the Sketch Monkey. All t-shirts and all merch are now finally back in stock. I know it's been probably over two months since we, we did have some supply issues and to get everything back in stock but all T-shirts and all hoodies and everything is now back online, including this doodle Nissan Z shirt and also the best-selling Datsun Z T-shirt is also now available on the Sketch Monkey and we do ship worldwide. So if you want to go and check that out, just head over to thesketchmonkey.com. So let's jump in here and have a look at this design. Let's start with the sketches because Ferrari they know how to make some proper looking sketches and these are no exceptions. You can clearly see 
uh, which ones are, are sketched by the boss, uh, Flavio Manzoni, and those are the, the lower section down here, because this is typical Manzoni style when it comes to sketches. Very dirty looking sketches, but dirty in this case does not mean bad. It means gorgeous. And you can see those type of sketches down here. But let's have a look at these top sketches here. Very interesting solution to the rear end graphics of the Ferrari. Because here we only have like this plexiglass solution. And it's only lit up at the very end of this plexiglass. Creating a very thin strip of light. And this is something that I don't think you could ever put into production. Because you need some proper brake lights here. So maybe create something like this for Ferrari if they wanted to put this into production. Just fill this section in and have this be uh, the brake lights. Or we can make some sort of uh, round tail lights as well if we wanted to. We could make, I don't know where they would fit, maybe somewhere here in the very end point of this design cutting into the rest of the body. It would look pretty cool to just have the regular traditional two round headlights, uh, taillights in the rear end and just put this thing into production. But there is a lot more things you need to consider before this would ever go into production and go through all the regulations that you need to put a car into production. You can see more of that right here. We have this gorgeous active air slot. The folds out from the body. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I can't remember if I've seen anything like that before. This is also a panel that goes out from the bodywork itself, just, just pops out when the car needs more cooling. These wheels, we're going to talk more about these wheels when we look at the real car, but you can see that they themselves, the, the wheel itself, the rim has some aero function in it here with these fins in between the lip of the uh, rim itself and the inside lip. I think it's very cool engineering to integrate as much cooling in this. Since this is a mid-engine car, that means that we still need to have some sort of intake here, but instead of cutting the body itself, they decided to make them active and just open up when needed. I think that's a fantastic idea. Further down, you can see that we have the air vents coming in here. These are supposed to be light beams, but the air flows in here and then comes out up on the hood and what this does, it creates this section, then becomes an entire wing to push the front end down to the ground. Very beautiful solution for Ferrari. I've seen this solution in a lot of other sports car Ferraris uh, as well. The 488, for example, have a very similar integration. And I also love these fins that we have up on the hood. And we also have another beautiful sketch from a front view. I just want to include that because I think it's just a nice looking sketch. Moving down to the Flavio Manzoni style sketch here you can see the marker work a little bit of orange airbrush creating this piece of art this is to the type of sketches that I would love to just hang up on the wall and have as proper pieces of art because I think they're so beautiful but with that said let's jump into the real thing here and let's have a look at this KC 23 and what this is all about the reason I think this is such a gorgeous design I mean it's pretty self-explanatory when you look at the surfacing of this car and when you look at where they decided to put the sharp lines in these clean surfaces. For example, everything flows very organically in this car and that is one piece, uh, one philosophy that I think is one of the key separations between Lamborghini and Ferrari is Lumber uh, Ferrari is supposed to be more organic while Lamborghini is supposed to have this more structured more industrial look and this is clearly a Ferrari it's been a few models back where you where they released released a new Ferrari and you couldn't really know if this is a Lambo is it a Ferrari what exactly is this but this there's no doubt that this is definitely a Ferrari so we have a couple of sharp lines right here in the front fender and the most beautiful sharp line smooth surface combination that I've ever seen, I think, I mean recently for sure, is this line right here. Just very subtle but so effective in putting some definition over the key elements, which in this case is the front axle and the muscle over the rear axle. This window treatment is also very unique and special. It looks like this is one of these frosted glass that you can make uh, transparent if you want to, or you can make it all tinted like we have here, because it looks like it's all tinted. I'm not sure if that's the type of glass they have in here. And we don't have typical traditional side mirrors. We have cameras instead sitting on this beautiful piece of carbon fiber. This is something that would not uh, work in the United States, unfortunately, because we 
uh, don't uh, allow that yet. I think it should be allowed because it makes a lot more sense in some cases to have uh, cameras instead of side mirrors, but it's only going to be a matter of time before um, it's legal to have that here in the US. It's already legal in Europe. The front end, we still have the same type of plexiglass integration of the headlights. And I'm not, I'm not sure if these are fully functional headlights with high beams and all of that. They look almost too thin to be able to incorporate all the functions that you need to have in a proper headlight. But overall, let's not focus on the small graphics here. What I want to focus on is the overall style of this car. And I really hope that this is the the direction that Ferrari is going to take with their uh, production cars and not just these one-offs. Just have a look at the side view here and the silhouette of this beautiful thing. We have this line in the in the back going into the gorgeous greenhouse, dipping down. You can see the A-pillar is almost right above the front axle, clear mid-engine proportions. Then you have this sharp line that we talked about and the sharp line in the back here. It kind of goes from smooth here into sharp and then fades in this area again in the bodywork. I do like that we have the black graphics in the lower section here as well, further cutting in and removing some of these masks. But this intake that we talked about, that is uh, an active intake, and you can pop this whole panel out to get more cooling. If we were to put this into production, what I think they would do, they could do here is to simply have the same intake in this area up here. So make this piece the airflow in in this section. And I think we can maybe make that work. I'm not sure, I'm not an engineer, but I think Ferrari could possibly make that work if they wanted to make this into a production car and homologate this specific design. We also have the active panel in the front end. I'm not sure how to uh, implement that properly for homologation. I'm gonna leave that up to the engineers. Looking at the rear end, we have a massive, absolute massive diffuser to suck the rear end down specifically when you don't have this big wing back here like we have uh, which is removable which you can have if you want to overall this side view I've missed Ferrari's side view when they look like this completely elegant and you can see the front end it's not aggressive and that's not what Ferrari is supposed to be Ferrari is supposed to be graceful and confident and that doesn't mean super aggressive headlights in the front end and this is exactly what I want to see from Ferrari. I'm not a huge fan of the wheel, the spoke designs themselves. I think these maybe look a little cheap to me. I'm not sure why, but they, I feel like they don't necessarily fit the overall design of this car. Now looking at the rear end, and here we can clearly see this line that I absolutely love and how it goes in to this integrated wing in the back end and how we have this big plexiglass piece as a big taillight. Again, this is not something you can put into production. They would have to work a lot more on integrating some sort of LED lights in here to have all the lights you need, reverse lights, brake lights, reflector lights, and so on. And then we have a very simplistic housing for this grill in the rear. There's no complex surfacing here with some very simple exhaust pipes as well and this big race car diffuser that looks like a cake that has three different layers on it with this massive fins down low as well. This is a proper race car diffuser where function comes above aesthetics. This just looks like a proper Le Mans diffuser in the rear end and that goes for the interior as well. Here you can clearly see that this is definitely not a production car. If all these panels, the intakes, the graphics and the light wasn't enough for you to know that this is not meant for production, you just have to look at this interior, which as I said in the article was taken straight from the 488 race car. However, they do have some AC in here. So whether you're racing on a hot summer's day or if it's a nice and breezy fall evening, you can always stay cool, even though the interior looks like it is proper Le Mans style race car. Last but not least, I saved the best view for last, and that is this view right here. I love how this transition from the sketch up top into the production version, even though I do believe that these sketches up here were actually made after the design was completed just for marketing purposes. These look like those type of sketches, while the Manzoni sketches down here does not look like that. These looks like actual ideation, ideation sketches, but I could be completely wrong and it could be the complete opposite. But anyway, this 
view off of this car is absolutely stunning because here you can clearly see even better this beautiful line that goes over the rear fender and then in to this big wing in the rear end and just look at all the work that they put in with the graphics having this black piece cutting in and creating this cocoon for the driver in the middle it just looks phenomenal and this is exactly what i hope as i said ferrari will continue to make these type of designs for their production cars